So as uh, luck would have it, um, my friends Laura and Austin uh, actually came to speak at an event I hosted at Pop Art, which is where I was working. Um, and they were talking about scout books. Um, Laura and Austin I've known since I moved to Portland. They printed my wedding invites like 11 years ago. Um, and uh, it was, it was, I was like, ah, oh, there's something there. That would be kind of a fun. I'd love to figure out a way to use that. Then a few weeks later, I was watching this TV show called Three Sheets, uh, which was this zany travel TV show about beer and alcohol. And this guy would go all over the world and drink and kind of do funny things. And I saw this, this little thing, just, just a tiny little you know, few, few seconds of uh, content on there. I'm like, what is that? And, and this is Newcastle. Um, this is called a spider chart. It's not my invention. It, lots of people do it, um, probably make it in Microsoft Word if you wanted to. Um, but they do it for quality control. They want to make sure Newcastle tastes the same day after day after day, year after year after year. Um, and so that's what they're using it for is, is a sensory evaluation tool. I'm like, man, if there was a, that would be a good way to remember beers. And thus, 33 Beers was born. Um, so that's, that's kind of how it started. Um, I, uh, I really, really struggled with the initial like, idea of actually producing something. Um, I think it was like $1,500 of my own money. And you know, when it's your money, it's so hard to like, make those decisions. Um, and I struggled, and I made spreadsheets. And um, I, I just, my wife was nice and said, go ahead and do it. Um, and I did it. And I sold out of that first round in like two weeks. Like, it was crazy. Um, it was a variety of apple. It was Thomas Jefferson's favorite apple, supposedly. Um, it, uh, if you've had cider before and you think you don't like it, you may like this one more. Um, a lot of people try, I'm um, gonna go ahead and start pouring. Um, a lot of people have had, you know, like, um, oh, what's that terrible cider? Um, super sweet ciders that taste like soda pop. Um, Mike's, yeah, this is not like that at all. Um, so this is, um, uh, if you look in your, book. Let me get one out so I can follow along with you. Um, oops. This is my desktop. Stress anyone out? That's, yeah, my grandfather, uh, actually, uh, D-Day was whatever, um, last week. Last week. Um, he uh, flew a glider pilot plane into Normandy on, at 6 a.m. on wow. D-Day. Like, kind of crazy. Where does things set up on 33? Yeah, so um, I had no idea I was going to end up with so many different titles um, at the time, of course. I thought I might end up with a stack of books that I'd be leaving to my grandchildren. Um, but I wanted to, what am I doing here? Um, sorry. I, um, let me get that squared away here. You are no fun to me. There we go. Bingo. Okay. Um, so I sold them as a three pack. Um, three 33 books makes 99 bottles of beer on the wall. 99 <laughs> bottles of beer. So it kind of doesn't make sense when you get into like cigars, but um, <laughs> it, it, it works, you know, most of the way down. Um, so anyway, uh, cider. Um, so. The, the most like probably obvious defining characteristic of cider is its sweetness or lack thereof. So this is considered an off dry cider. Um, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it, um, but the, uh, the, the so-called supermarket ciders tend to be much more on the sweet side of things. Um, so this I think is a little bit more interesting. Um, a lot of people talk about cider um, as falling somewhere on an axis of um, acidity. Um, or sweetness, sweet, 
and then tannic. Does everybody know the word tannic? That's kind of sometimes kind of a troubling word for people. Um, it expresses itself a lot in wine as it, it comes from like the barrel, um, oaky kind of flavor. It's kind of that dry sensation you have on your mouth, kind of like a tongue scraping sort of quality. Um, but, but cider, if you can kind of think about cider as falling somewhere in a, in a triangle of those three things. So this, this um, I think, is a pretty acidic cider. Um, it's not very sweet smell. Um, and wash it around in your mouth a little bit. And actually, a little bit of air in your mouth sort of helps open it up. So talking is not a terrible thing to do. Um, taking a big breath like that is also a good thing. I just kind of go from there, so pour a little more. <laughs> the glass is so small, it's really hard to get a good, good nose full here. It's not super aromatic. So what I do is I just go around and um, you know, make a little dot, and then I'll come back and connect the dots. So alcohol-wise, I think this is about six something, six, six nine. So that's so it's a little bit high. Um, I just write it in there. Um, not terribly alcoholic. It's, it's, it's masked. I think I do get a little bit of berry on it. Kind of a raspberry sort of quality. Sometimes raspberry has a little bit of um, pectin in it. Pectin is what makes jelly jelly and kind of slippery feeling in your mouth. Um, I'd say a little bit there. I'm not getting a lot of tropical. And it's, and it's actually not as tart as I remember it. Um, I had another one the other day that was like Puckerville. Mm. I'd, I'd say it's quite floral. Not too spicy. A little bit earthy. Earthy sometimes is like, if you think about like, mushrooms like you know has that kind of like that that funk a little bit I call this middling sweetness it's actually not super acidic but it's it's got more than most do I don't get much yeast actually the tannins a little lower than I thought so I think a body is like the, the thickness the fullness uh, that it has in your mouth um, oops Pretty well balanced, and then I linger to me is like how long that flavor kind of stays with you in your mouth, and I'm, I'm not getting a huge amount there. So to me, this is a really nice kind of clean, easy drinking um, cider, good for a hot day. Although the alcohol is a little high, so you might not want to drink too many of them. <laughs> um, and then sparkle-wise, this is this is right up there. I would say it's not like bursting in your mouth, but um, that's it. So then bottle is clearly a bottle. Um, uh, increasingly, a lot of cider is coming in cans. Um, cans are a little cheaper uh, than glass. Um, they're also, you can make the argument that ecologically they're a bit better. Um, glass is super, super recyclable, but it's also super heavy. Um, so to move it about costs, costs a lot in terms of transportation. Um, so you, you're seeing a lot more in, in cans. It, it, from a marketer's perspective, it's a little harder to sell something that's expensive in a can than it is to sell it in a nice clean glass bottle. Um, this looks a little nicer on your table than, than a can does. Um, and cask is um, just like a keg, but um, in the beer world, that would mainly be a naturally uh, a carbonated keg. Um, but sometimes, sometimes in the um, cider world, they call it a cask anyway. And then, I yeah. Okay, any other questions or shall I? Um, that really works for you? Like that, in the end you figure out, oh, I like these types? Um, I do, to me, the shape doesn't do that for me, but it does. I, th I feel like the more I do it, the more I realize what qualities I appreciate in a cider. So um, I, I came to cider after beer, um, and beers tend to be very dry relative to cider. Ciders usually have a lot more sweetness than beer do. So because I'm kind of a beer guy new to the cider world, I tend to appreciate beer or ciders that are drier, like less sweet. Um, so you'll come through your book and look for those that you like that are on the drier side. 
Yeah, and, and again, this is just a component of it. I, I think as, as a shorthand of like, what did I enjoy? Like, I just go to the five stars. Like, there's nothing simpler than that. Um, what's funny about it is, uh, like, I find just the act of writing it down makes me me remember it more. So oftentimes, like, I, I don't, once I've written it down, I, I sometimes don't ever refer to it again. Like, I have a stack of these at home that, you know, most of them are stuck up in here somewhere. Yeah. Um, how subjective is it to sort of like how, what mood you're in or you know what you earlier, you know, I mean, do, do you ever find yourself tasting the same? I mean, I guess there's so many factors, right? Because it's like what year it was and what yeah. when it was bottled. I, I think taste is super subjective. Right. Like, um, uh, everybody brings to it every every experience that they've had in the past. So, you know, um, I might have had durian fruit sometime and really enjoyed it. You might have had a terrible experience with it. So when I say, some, oh, this reminds me of durian, you might be like, oh, gross, I don't want that. But for me, that sounds delicious, you know. I don't actually like durian, but, um, <laughs> you know, it, you bring all of your history to it, too. So if you've had a great deal of different ciders, you might... Um, you know, just have a different frame of reference for, for what you enjoy and what you don't enjoy. The setting, I think, makes a huge difference. Um, the amount of samples. The amount of samples you've had. <laughs> I generally find that I'm no good after about 10 samples of anything, regardless of intoxicating or not intoxicating. Like, your tongue and your palate just... You, my attention span is not long enough for that to, to be a... There are people that, you know, for five days will sit, and, sit around and do nothing but judge beer conferences, judge beers. And can can sustain that attention span, but I'm not one of those people. Um, um, but even like having the same like the same same like say con conditionally somehow the same out of the bottle like two separate bottles, and you would have, I mean have you do you ever test the same kind repeatedly, and how do you find that the results vary? Yeah. Um, well, they can be two different products, for one thing. Like, um, even, especially breweries that are, um, or cideries or wineries or whatever, the smaller something is, the less um, consistency sometimes there is. It, it becomes a much more handmade product. Um, so, like, literally, somebody is filling this bottle and then moving on and filling another one. A big volume place is going to, like, fill you know, a thousand at a time and no human hand will ever touch it, right? So just the nature of human hands, like a little speck of something gets into it, who knows, you know, like, so the, um, I'm, I'm hoping to do a champagne version this year that's like in that same kind of style. Um, I didn't bring those, but it's, uh, it's foil embossed and it's really like sexy looking. Um, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive to produce. Um, the whiskey, chocolate, um, hot sauce, cider, and then scotch is the newest one. I released, uh, oh, I don't know, this, this spring. So I basically developed a super expensive taste in all of these products. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so, I, I consider myself a creature of novelty. Like, I'm the worst guy to ask about like what's good at a crappy bar because I'm like, eh, I haven't. What What do you got that's new? You know, that's all I care about. And um, I think people in that world tend to care mostly about new experiences too. They they're attracted by the unusual and new new sensations and flavors. Um, yeah, I think most people that are in that world do, do keep records of some kind because it memorializes something that you're never going to be able to experience again. Um, not everyone does, but um, yeah. Scotch is, is a uh, rarefied. Um, it's, that and wine are probably like the two craziest collector taste people. Um, as you said, like, you know, um, so that's my Scotch map there. Um, and it, it, it shows every distillery that's in Scotland. I think there's more than 100. Um, active, there are more than 100. Um, there's 100 more that have closed, you know, over the last 20, 50 years. Um, and so those people are seeking out 
those mothballed uh, scotches, what they're called. Because, you know, an odd barrel, like distillery closes, they've got 100 years worth of stock. They can't get rid of it in one fell swoop. So somebody tucks a barrel away, somebody tucks 10 barrels away, and they start sh surfacing over time. And yeah, it's, it's a crazy world. And they, like a top end scotch can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars for a single bottle. Like if it's the rarer it is and the older it is typically. Same thing with wine. So this year we got a cool new website finally. It's actually from a designer's perspective, not that cool. I wish it was a little cooler than it is, but uh, it's a mature e-commerce platform. It's got a mobile website. Um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of weird. Like uh, it's, it's been a change for me to start, stop thinking about everything as a designer and start thinking about it a little bit more from a business owner's perspective. Like this is really easy to do shipping from where before I was doing it super manually. Um, uh, I, I've gotten into doing um, a lot of custom books. Um, so I do, this is one I did for New Belgium. There's a Guinness one. Guinness wanted to get, wanted to pay me on net 75 terms, <laughs> which is where I pulled out the, I'm a dude card. <laughs> like I'm just one guy. Like, <laughs> they're actually like very gracious about it after that, but it was a funny, funny experience. Um, I did a Jameson whiskey book. I'm, I'm about halfway through. It's pretty cool. I mean, think about it. <laughs> it's a big country. Well, of course you're going to run off the travels. Yeah. Well, I don't actually do that. I know people that do similar things that I do that deduct all of their alcohol, but I, that's a conversation I don't want to have should the <laughs> audit ever come. <laughs> I just like drinking is the sad truth of the matter. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I, I can rarely stop at just one. So um, this year I also made a... Uh, a scotch map and a, a wine of France map. Um, I spent about six months working on that one, kind of on and off, uh, doing other things. Uh, that one I probably spent three months on, and then that one I did in like two weeks. <laughs> I got uh, these, all three of these are sold through a catalog as a big customer. I was like, yeah, I got this beer thing, and they're like, great, we'll add that to the catalog. And I'm working on a scotch thing. Oh yeah, we'll take a whole bunch. Um, you know, you should do a wine one. And I'm like, oh yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. I'm like. We'll take a lot of them. Like, okay. <laughs> so I, I did that super quick. It was a lot of late nights, but it was, it, it turned out pretty cool, I think. Um, so yeah. Um, and the, the nice thing is, I, this is my son, Eli. Uh, he's making a birdhouse for my mom. For it's supposed to be for Mother's Day. We didn't get it done yet, so it's gonna be for her birthday. Um, well, look at my table. I, I use a lot of glue too. <laughs> Um, yeah. He's well protected too, I see. He is. <laughs> He's a funny kid. Um, yeah, so I, I think, um, you know, if, if I can bring this back a little bit, um, I left that design world um, and I, I haven't really looked back. I still do a little bit of design work, but I don't think I'll ever do the agency thing again. Um, I'm really enjoying, you know, my. It's stressful in different ways, owning your own business and kind of being your own source of income. But, um, you know, the, it took me a while to figure out, but like my day job wasn't that secure either. Like you're, when you're getting a paycheck from somebody, it's only, um, uh, it's not that certain, you know, and, and I'm, I'm comfortable with the uncertainty that I'm in charge and, and a little bit more comfortable with that, um, I think, and having a good time. So. I'll leave you with this final thought <laughs> that I saw at uh, CC Motor Company. <laughs> That's a good one too, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, I got another cider we can taste. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I don't know, probably rambled on a little bit, but. I have a really important question. Please. Next one, 33 bottles of smoke. <laughs> what, say it again? So I get that, that is, that is probably a, the most common question I get, uh, especially in the last like three months. Um, and uh, it's, it's a pretty easy answer. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do it anytime soon. Um, I don't, I'm not, that's not a judgment call. Um, I'm not gonna admit anything on the video here, but um, I, 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 
I see there's an emerging culture of connoisseurship uh, as relates to marijuana and like Honestly, like I get very serious emails about it. Not like, hey, you should totally do 33 buds, man. I do get those. Um, but I get really serious ones that are like, you know, it would be laid out in this way. And these are the qualities that it to cider apples and dessert apples. Dessert apples are your red delicious, your green da 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 da, whatever. Things you buy at the grocery store, they're meant to be eaten. Um, there's also culinary apples, which is another ball game. But, um, and then there's cider apples. And cider apples, generally speaking, are not the kind of apples that you'd want to eat. They're very like bitter when you bite into them. They're small. They look like crab apples a lot of times. They have um, a brown kind of rough skin sometimes called russet. Um, and uh, this cider is made all with those kind of apples. Um, uh, I don't know her, but uh, Nat made this cider as a tribute to somebody who planted a lot of uh, those kinds of trees, I think in Forest Grove or someplace like that. And she's passed away, so this is kind of like a tribute um, cider to her. Um, but it's all French and English uh, cultivars. It's, probably, it's, it's unusual, isn't it? Yeah. So it's got a lot more tannic structure to it, um, which you're probably getting. And I, I can't remember if there's a lot of acidity to it, but I, I, generally those ciders tend to have more acidity to them. Um, and it's probably a little too cold. I probably left it in there a little too long. Good? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, he does some really crazy stuff, Nat, Nat does. Uh, fun stuff, really, really interesting ciders. Um, ciders kind of the, the cool new thing in the drinks business right now. It's the fastest growing category in, in alcoholic beverages. Yeah. I went to one of your things. Oh, right. I have your business card actually sitting on my computer. I kept meaning to email you. I didn't, but <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, the reason I came to your presentation was at the time I was considering doing an app. Um, and I've pretty much decided I'm not going to do that now. Um, again, I don't want to make my new job like my old job. And um, I just like paper. So that's, that's the main reason. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I, um, I don't have all the answers to stuff like this. But um, I, th I think a lot about like businesses that are appropriate for one person or three people to run and not like a, a lot of businesses because they want to grow businesses and become big and stuff like that and, and for me I don't know if this is a forever feeling but for me right now I just want it to be me and as, as complicated at least as, as least complexity as I can make it um, so for me the, the funding aspect of it like it could be a cool marketing tool um, perhaps but um, you know, I, I'm just going to release products as I am able to devote the time, money, and attention to them. Um, and I think that's 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 it. <laughs> I'm not going to grow beyond what I am able to do. You know, at least for now. <laughs> do you have any employees? Nope, just me. Yeah, um, my email signature says chief janitor. So <laughs> the main part of it is like I actually very little of my time is spent doing design for this business. I do and um, sales and marketing and all that stuff. So your job's okay, but the boss is a jerk. Mm -hmm. Keeping and stuff like I just that's just not my forte. And um, but I don't know. Like I'm good, I'm as good at it as I need to be, I guess, and that's good enough. Uh, <laughs> I don't need to be like. Fortune 500 company books, like I can just keep it simple and that's probably good enough. Um, I got into kind of an interesting, I won't go into the whole story, but um, kind of an interesting legal thing early on. Um, somebody uh, sort of copied one of my books. Uh, they did, I mean, copy it um, without my knowledge. Um, it was sort of an accident on their part. It wasn't malicious, but I still felt really you know, like when something is your baby and like something like that happens to it, like your initial reaction is just to lash out and like you get really mad and really emotional about it. Um, and I guess I got some good advice early on, which is that like it's, it's never a bad idea to spend money on lawyers and accountants. Um, and 
I went to my lawyer about it, and he was he was like, you know, like there's a, you could turn this you could turn this into a big fist fight if you want to. You'll probably lose if it comes down to that because you're one guy, and there it was a much bigger organization. But he's like, you know, the law isn't just a thing that's like a sword. Like it, it can be a, a conversation tool. And um, he was like, just relax about it. You know, they see what really the issue is. Have a calm conversation about it and see what see what comes of it and i'm so glad i did that because they actually have turned into a customer of mine and um, we have really good relationship um, it's a really cool company um, i'm happy to do business with them um, so that, i guess that was one kind of kind of interesting thing um, so yeah and all my friends on facebook and stuff they're like oh you should sue them and you know and, and i'm kind of like oh maybe i should i don't know but you know anyway it was kind of an interesting experience yeah. Oh. So I am self-distributed for the most part, except for in the UK and a little bit in Japan. I have a distribution partner. Um, so did you go to like gift, store, gift shows? No. <laughs> that probably would have been a good idea. Uh, and again, like. Uh, I've been really lucky in that, like, appearing in some of these publications, like, real simple, and Sky, Delta Sky Magazine was, like, a huge thing for me, and I'm like, I didn't know people actually read those things, like, um, what was the other one, House Beautiful was also a hilarious one, like, so many people emailed me, I saw you in House Beautiful, I'd love to know more about selling your products, and, um, so mostly it's been that way, like, I haven't had to do a whole ton of, um, outreach into those other spaces, um, I've looked into it a little bit. Um, I do do some trade shows. Like I do, um, uh, I just did the Craft Brewers Conference in Denver this last um, uh, couple months ago, I guess. It was in Denver. It's going to be in Portland next year. It's going to be awesome. Um, I do the American Cheese Society's uh, conference, which is a lot of fun. Uh, I took my newborn daughter last year, which is a really good way to draw people to the booth. <laughs> uh, but she, she was like two weeks old or something. Um, she had a good time. Um, well, she was, you know, just like snuggled up, so it was, it was fun. Um, any, yeah, I, I've looked into those those kinds of shows, and I think I probably would be successful at it. But again, I don't. Really at what cost? Idea, but for him, it's kind of like a good idea. I don't know. Like, he keeps the riffraff out, I guess, or kind of. And I think like people get excited about finding Thirty Three Books Company. It's not like you know, item number 732 in the catalog of offerings from Joe Stationary Distribution Company, you know, like they're, oh, you're the guy? Like, they think that's cool, like, I think. Or they're pissed off because I'm super unorganized. <laughs> Forgot to send them an invoice or something. But I'm pretty good about that. <laughs> pretty good about the invoices, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, that's just kind of the way I live my life, I guess, a little bit. <laughs> like, um, it's like one of my friends is constantly telling me, like, Dave, if you could just focus on like one thing, I can't imagine how successful you would be. But like, I do, I do so many different things. It's not, it's not a braggy thing. I almost think it's like. Uh, <laughs> A detractor thing. Like I, I do this thing, the Stumptown Forty, which you guys help out with. Um, it's an annual Pinewood Derby for adults. Uh, it's super fun, um, and I love doing that. It's like a really fun outlet. I, I still do a lot of design. I do it, you know, directly with companies now instead of as as part of an agency. Um, I just like being able to kind of like choose what I do on a daily basis. Like. Yesterday, I spent a couple hours out in the shop working on a bandsaw, and then I went back inside and was developing icons for software. Like, and I love that kind of a day. And then I went to the post office with an armful of envelopes. You know, like, to me, that's a really fun day. Like, I love that variety. Like, um, so I don't know. That, and that's why, like, 
I think of something like I want to do a coffee poster, right? But I don't want to do it enough right now that like <laughs> I'm actually going to do it tomorrow, you know? But I will. I will. Um, I, I need to sell some more of these probably. <laughs> so, you had another question? Do you list where you can find your books on your website? I do. Um, I have jury duty tomorrow, um, which is when I'm hoping to catch up on <laughs> updating that database. Uh, not while I'm in the jury seat, but like in the <laughs> deliberation so room. I will pay attention one, if I get selected to be on a jury, but until that time, I'm not going to pay yeah. attention. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done it before, not in Oregon, so I'm kind of curious about that. That's what I figured. So that's when I'm going to update my retailer database. But yes, I do have one. It's at 33books.com. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's a, it's a good question. Um, I was not like an enthusiast of all of these products when I first started. Um, let's see if I can find that screen again. Um, outside of their sphere of knowledge, and they find that interesting. I think they, they they humor me and tell me they think that's interesting sometimes, and vice versa. So. We have a maker meme. Yeah, Chrissy. And that she is constantly awesome. bugging me about that. Um, I. I like Chrissy a lot. She actually sold my cheese books for a while. Um, uh, I think she sold the cheese making part of that business. But um, yeah, 33 Mazers of Mead. Like, it will happen. I just, yeah. Well, that's the nice thing about living in the Northwest. When we moved here totally. years ago, you know, it was, you know, it was Coors Light and Miller Light. And, mm -hmm. and you move up here and you, you, know, want some more that keep... you, appreciate, uh, you appreciate. I don't want to take it home with me. Yeah, I, I, and I think that is, I, I, I do think this business reflects my lifestyle here. Like, I don't think it would be the same company if I still lived in Des Moines, Iowa. Although, you know, it's kind of sewer culture is like everywhere now. Like, it's, it's kind of insane how everywhere is getting to be like that. Um, well, I mean, it's changing. We were in Iowa and Kansas yeah. 10 years ago, and people were still openly smoking cigarettes. Everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And, and when I was a kid, you could smoke in the mall. Yeah, it's yeah, awesome. But, you know, sure <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, of course not. Yeah. They actually, they banned smoking there before we did it here. So. Um, so you mentioned your morning but practical website. What do you use for the back? Shopify, and I'm a fan. Uh, they're Canadian, but they're really cool. <laughs> and they're really cool. No, they're awesome. Um, yeah, I looked at a couple when I was doing it, uh, including like a roll your own. I was kind of on a roll your own PayPal solution before, and. Um, just operationally, it's a lot more efficient to do it through Shopify because um, the fulfillment and all of the communication is mostly handled through that system. Payment now is handled through them in a lot of a lot of cases. Um, yeah, it was it was kind of complicated to figure all that stuff out though, especially the payment part of it. Um, the that industry seems to be in a lot of transition right now. With like PayPal has obviously been doing it for a long time, but you know Square has changed the nature of credit card processing a lot. Um, I just saw Bank of America now has their own little like swipey tool, um, but yeah, yeah. And what's funny about that is like about a year ago, I had a conversation with Bank of America, and they were trying to get me to switch over to a terminal uh, solution because um, I do hand key some stuff uh, for retailers, especially. Um, and yeah, like, but you know, they wanted a three-year contract, and they wanted you know X percent and so on. And American Express was going to be at this rate, and. Uh, you know, card not present is different from card present and signature. You know, it's just like super, super complicated. Um, but now I think that conversation would be a completely different conversation um, than it was even a year ago. So, yeah. 15 years ago, small business, people working out of their homes couldn't even get it. Yeah, hard. totally. You know, you know, you know, you just can't be legit. Yeah. Oh, I know. This is a good one. Uh, I cannot afford to do credit checks on every potential retailer, so I always get the first transaction paid before I ship it. And then I do net 30 after that. <laughs> like, yeah. I've gotten burned a couple of times, which is really irritating. <laughs> and you're like, I met you like in person and you seemed like really nice. And <laughs> in fact, you've been avoiding my phone calls in a really weird kind of creepy way. So. Well, just, well, just remember, I mean, next time yeah. when you meet in public, you make them feel really uncomfortable. 
Yeah, I know. Hey, yeah. Um, I did it a little bit, um, that Guinness one that I was showing you, because um, brewer, like professional, professionally, like the way they evaluate product is really different than the way I think consumers generally, they're looking for flaws or defects in the product. So, they, you know, diacetyl, it's got da da da, -da it's, it's infected with whatever. Um, and that tends to be what they're looking for and they're focused on that. Um, so it's hard for them sometimes to make the leap from like, okay, this is how the consumer is experiencing this product. And so in that case, I think I helped them with some, this is how I am experiencing this. Like, is this what you intended it to be? <laughs> and, you know, we kind of worked on it that way. Jameson, I think I did that too, actually. Yeah. Hey, Yo. Um, did you do the um, logo and the still? I did not. Um, I do like kind of tactical sales stuff for him, but yeah. I was also wondering, you said you're self-distributed. Mm -hmm. Did you ever pound the payment, you know, bring stuff, some stuff in a gift store? Yeah, I did when I first started. Um, again, I was kind of like networked in the beer world, and that was a kind of a foothold. Um, Belmont Station, which is a great little beer store up on um, Stark, ironically. It used to be on Belmont, so that's why it's called Belmont Station. Uh, took the first order and I gave it to him on consignment because I was kind of timid about it too. Um, and that was a good way to get in as like kind of a low risk way to get your product in the door at some place um, for you and for them. Um, and then Sarah Veza also did the same thing. And one more that I'm not, it's not jumping out. Bailey's tap room right over here. Um, also took the books initially. And I thought it was like such a, like I was so timid about it, but I'm thinking about it. Like I sell a, um, Wholesale, I sell 24 of these, like, for 60 bucks, which, like, for a business is nothing. Like, but I was so timid about it at the time, and, like, it seemed like, I'll give it to you on consignment. And they're like, yeah, okay, here's a check. <laughs> 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 it's just way more trouble to deal with consignment than just, well, just buy them from you. Like, see how it goes. Um, yeah. It's, it's grown really organically. That's been kind of the funny thing about the whole thing. Um, I used to make all the display stands myself in my wood shop, and um, you guys probably have some of the old ones around. I, mean, I took them back from you. <laughs> Give me a collector's item someday. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, now I uh, have some cool cardboard ones that I got made up. Yeah, the neat. Ones with the little cuts Those didn't work very good. Uh -uh. Awesome. Yeah, they were. It was uh, my flooring from my attic remodel. I like. <laughs> I used to like plane the boards down. And went, yeah. Really? I was kind of surprised you gave them back to me, actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Does anybody want any more of this one? We don't want to let this go to waste. Anyone get some more? Want some more? Cool. Sweet. All right. Well, um, I think everybody should give a round of applause for Dave here. And if you guys want to take a little while. Come up and have, uh, have some. Oh, wait, we, didn't, we, we, we got to give away the wine poster oh, and the yeah. scotch poster. Um, that was the University of Iowa? Okay. Really? Oh, you can pick which one you want then. France? It's your in here if you want some. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat>